Hello, this is Amber coming to you with another simple mobility sequence. If you sit down a lot in front of a computer, sit in your car for long commutes, this workout or stretch flow sequence will be perfect for you because it is geared towards helping you release tension in those hip flexors, inner thighs, as well as strengthening the back muscles and glutes while releasing tension in your core. So this is going to be a really relaxing and energizing and stress relieving sequence. And if you're short on time, lucky for you, this is only 15 minutes. So grab your mat or just a free space and enjoy. So when you roll up, you're gonna take it to some side bends just to work that core a little bit. We're gonna start with some rotations. Make sure the arms stay in the same position. You're not bending those elbows or the upper body, but that torso is rotating those arms around the hips. And now we're going to some side bends. So make sure that you're using those obliques to squeeze that elbow closer towards those thighs. And when you're doing the rotation downward, you're doing diagonals. So still those arms are not bending, but they're staying straight and you're using those abs to bring those elbows a little bit closer. All right. All right, now squeeze those feet in just a little bit to start these slow marches. This is going to engage the core, still work on rotation, torso rotation. And as you do this, make sure that you are not twisting the arms. The arms stay in that nice straight line, hands behind head, and it's the torso that is turning or pivoting that body. So the knees and elbows aren't really touching. Take it to a side view. We're gonna do some hip flexor stretches. Lift the arms up, deep breath in, press the hips forward, drop that outside arm towards that bent leg before you step it back in. We're gonna do this a couple times, alternating sides. I'm just gonna give you alternate view. Step back, same arm as the front leg drops down and the opposite arm crosses over. Easy peasy, just gonna do this a couple more times just to release the tension in the hip flexors. You can drop that hip. Notice how I drop my hip just to make sure that I am not making any imbalances or overcompensating. All 
All right, so now we're gonna do some forward leg bends. Keep that back flat. We're going to do this just to stretch out those hamstrings. Sorry, let me get you a better view. When you are extending that leg forward, make sure that foot is flexed. Um, if you have balance issues, be sure to have something to hold on to um, nearby if necessary, whether a wall, a stick, or um, something level so you can keep your balance. So we're just gonna do this a few more times. Keep that foot flexed. Um, if you want to be an overachiever, you can work on trying to lift that leg all the way up. Um, if you feel any pain in your hip flexors or on your hips or sides, be sure to just keep the leg down. You also do not have to keep that, bring that foot up to 90 degrees. Um, you can make it a 30 degree angle, 20 degree angle, whatever your balance will allow. And to stretch it out, we're just gonna do a couple of quad stretches, working on balance. Again, stretching out those quads as well as those hip flexors. Same thing, other side. See how I activated my abs and pulled them in just to get a little bit more balance? You should be doing the same. All right, now that those quad stretches are done, we are going to take it down to the floor. If you want, you can try this low squat um, and see how low you can go. Um, but before, when you get down to the ground, you're just going to do some nice little side bends. Have your feet about hip width apart, and you're just going to drop the knees to the side, alternating. Um, try to keep them at a 90 degree angle. Just try to keep your hips facing forward, and also try to relax. When you're leaning back, keep that chest lifted and shoulders rolled back. So you're focusing on the lower body instead of allowing that upper body to cave in. I personally like doing these just because it releases the tension in my hips as well as my inner thighs. So we're just gonna do this just a little bit more. Be sure to take your time with this so you can really feel the stretches and feel the body working. And when you're done, you're going to take it to one side and try to activate those glutes by lifting the leg up. So you can just keep it there or you can do the forward backward movement. Notice how my upper body is staying still and not really swaying as much. You want to have as much control in the upper body as possible and use those glutes as much as possible. When you're ready, you're going to switch sides and do the same thing on the other side. I really like this exercise because it works on the gluteus medius and minimus, which are muscles that are very necessary, but a lot of people do not know how to work them and isolate them without activating the gluteus maximus muscle. So this one is a real gem of exercise. All right, so when we're done with this exercise, we are going to get on all fours in a tabletop position. Make sure your back is flat, tailbone tucked under, arms shoulder width apart, knees hip width apart. We're going to work on preventing rounded shoulders and curved back by working on those supraspinatus and rhomboid muscles that will help build your posture and reduce the effects of sitting down for too long. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing other side. Let me show you a better angle. So still wanna make sure that those hips are in line with the knees and you're not shifting the weight back to take the pressure off the upper body. You want that pressure because that is going to create resistance to help work those itty bitty muscles. And so once you're done doing the arm flaps, you're going to hold it and extend those arms out overhead. Just to add on, I guess this would be the overachiever movement for this particular exercise. If you want that extra pump, if you need to, you can get some baby weights. I would say no more than three pounds. A one pound weight would be nice. Even this body weight um, just works perfectly.
All right, so we're going to switch gears, gonna take it to a full plank and then to a downward dog. This is just going to release the tension in the upper back and allow you to relax just a little bit while working that core and stretch those hamstrings out as well. So when you come down a downward dog, tuck those toes underneath before you lift back up into plank and then try to drop those heels to the ground when you come up to that downward dog and make sure you keep those eyes focused on the ground when you're in tabletop position and focus those eyes towards the back of the feet if you want to be an overachiever you can take it into a little nose dive just to work on that push-up sequence and work that upper body because What's the point of stretching if you can't test your limits just a little bit? So we're going to continue this movement a, full, a few more times just to get comfortable and just to allow the body to relax. I love it just because that upper dog movement is so relaxing to that lower back. And when we're done, we're going to switch gears and still focus on the lower back and do some child's poses, taking it to the side to stretch out the lower back muscles and just to relax and give those arms a stretch too after doing those downward dogs and upper body movements. This should be really nice and relaxing. Now we're going to come up and we're just going to stretch these inner thighs once again because mine are super tight and I'm not sure if you need it but I know I need it. So when we do this, I want you to step out diagonally just to get a different variation. Bring the arm overhead just for a stretch and then cross it over just to get some movement in that upper body. And we're just gonna continue this a few more times just to get into the flow, get that heart rate up a little bit, work that lymphatic system, get our blood moving, and just allow our body to relax because all of those stretching is good if you want to recover and reduce pain, you have to allow the blood to flow into those muscles to clean out the cellular waste that the body creates as it allows us to, um, as it supports us throughout the day. So we're just gonna do this a few more times. Make sure you're taking those deep breaths in through the nose and out the mouth during the sequence. All right, so we're gonna take it down, tabletop position once again. This time we're going to work those glutes because if those inner thighs are tight, then they're probably overworking those outer abductors. So working the glutes and doing the fire hydrant will also help offset the tight hip flexors and inner thigh muscles because you are working the antagonist muscles, which are the opposing muscles to those inner thighs and hip flexors. So once we're done with the fire hydrant kickbacks, we're gonna take it to a full rond de jam. Um, that's a dancer term, but just full leg circles. Um, keep that foot flexed and try to lift that hip all the way up. And then we're gonna do the same thing on their side. Once again, fire hydrants and donkey kicks. One thing I want to make sure is that that foot is not rotated to the left or to the right. Notice how mine is. I think at some point I try to correct it. Well, I think on this side I just got a little lazy. But um, try to keep that foot level and perpendicular when you're taking it to that straight kickback. There we go. Nice and even. You see me correct that mistake. So try to be um, self-aware and make corrections during this movement as possible, which is another reason why we're going slow. All right, so switching gears, once again, stretching out those hip flexors because this is one of the things that we need to work on if you're sitting down a lot, if you're traveling a lot, or if you're in a lot of seated stationary positions. And right now we're just taking a little bit of time to stretch those glutes after doing those fire hydrant donkey kick rond de jambe sequences. So take your time, deep breaths, allow those hips to open up, allow the tension to release in that body. And 
and we're going to do the same thing on both sides. All right, so we're going to take it to the floor. Just gonna do a little bit of core work. And with this, we are going to also work on obliques and a little bit of inner thigh, outer thigh work. So when you're doing this, try to keep the shoulders on the ground the entire time as you drop the legs down one way. Turn your head the opposite direction. Notice how my knees are not touching during the sequence. And that's supposed to create balance and not to depend on those inner thighs to keep the legs squeezing together or to overcompensate with those outer thighs to lift those legs up. So if you wanna be an overachiever, try straight legs with this sequence. And for this one, if you wanna be a little bit easier for yourself, try taking one leg at a time. So this is a good starter position and if you feel like that one leg at a time is too simple, try taking both legs, you overachiever you. Also when you do this, try to feel that nice stretch when you're dropping those legs all the way down to the side on those obliques. And when you feel that stretch, you should also feel those obliques engaging to lift those legs back up. All right, so we are almost done. To end things, we're going to bring those legs in for a nice hug. And then we're going to extend the legs up, stretch those hamstrings, turn the feet out, grab the feet. If you need to, you can grab the inside of the arches and just alternate extending the legs for a deep inner thigh hamstring stretch you can alternate legs take your time with this hold it in if you need to do both legs at the same time or continue to alternate legs whatever works for you this is you calming down and slowing down the movement and cooling down that's what i'm trying to say we're cooling down and preparing to end and once again we're just going to come up and do a forward stretch stretch those inner thighs and we're just going to come up and stretch the hamstrings on each side of the body all right so if this is too difficult i have another variation which is just for you to come up and to bring one leg in and to do a single stretch on each side. So if you are a little bit tighter, then this would be a good alternative for you to see the same benefits. And that is it, thank you for joining me and I'll see you next week for another installment.